Well, welcome, welcome. I'm Al Mall, the Park Director, and I want to welcome all of you as we uh, kick off a celebration of Foster Park. And I think behind me, I think it draws mention of the fact that uh, Foster Park, which continues to be one of this community's most treasured assets, and especially not only by the community as a whole, but the associations around here really draw close to it and really have a strong ownership as part of their family. But Foster joins an elite club uh, back in 2008, as you remember, we established Legacy Parks, of which we recognize parks that are 100 years of age or 100 years of wealth. And we now have 15, and we have two more this year that joins that elite group uh, besides Foster, VC or Vesey, and Camp Allen. And the celebration there won't be quite as strong as this one, but nevertheless, those two parks deserve equal tribute. There's two purposes for the press conference. One, we're dedicating the sign behind us as an entrance, but that only really kicks off some of the planned improvements that are on the drawing board for this park and this whole area out here alone is both the traffic system and some of the vehicular and pathway um, uh, migration will be, be improved to make it more safe but also more appealing to the park and the community as a whole. And I'll have Julie or Alec come up here in a few minutes and just talk about that. But uh, this find behind me, which is comparable to what we have in Lakeside and Sweeney, and also we have a limestone one at Rock Hill, um, is made possible by the Friends of the Park, the Park Foundation, um, also by John Oldenkamp, the Kathy Callan and John Powell Fund, and I, I think I've got everybody in that group, I think I've covered everybody, and the Park Department, but the majority of the funding, probably 90% of it, was non was all private funding and that's where we're real lucky as a park department to get that type of support but does it but also on there you'll notice a, a bronze or a signia that calls it a centennial legacy or a legacy centennial park you'll notice that on all the other 15 parks we have they may not have quite as elaborate sign as lakeside or foster but they'll have that signia and that's something special in our minds as a park department with community that we recognize them with that, I also want to recognize a few of our leaders here to here today. I see uh, your district. <laughs> Councilman Jeff Paddock is here. Jeff, thanks for coming. And at large, Councilman, Councilman John Cho. Both these individuals are significant supporters of the parks, not just the Foster Park, but in the community as a whole. So we always are fortunate that they step up to voice an opinion. And it's always good to have your elected officials take a position and support us with the people they can connect, work, connect with, not just their constituency, but the uh, other elected officials and other leadership in the community. Uh, who else do we have? Julie, uh, one of the, actually has been driving along with others, the Friends of the Park for years. And Julie might want to make a comment or two on the improvements, or you, or you have Alec come up here and help you. At that, after that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Perry Ershman, our deputy director, who's helped champion a lot of the celebration that's going on out here uh, to the thanks of uh, both the uh, Friends of the Park, uh, Southwood and Foster Park Associations, and a variety of private donors, too many to list. Julie, you want to take the mic for just a second or two? Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. A while, a while back, about 10 years ago, we did cultural landscape reports, which are plans for the for several of our major parks, and Foster Park was one of the beneficiaries of these plans. And as a result, um, there's a major effort going on right now for the Parks and Recreation Department and Alec Johnson to work with um, the Board of Public Works to do a major overhaul of the, and, and Adrian and, and Sumo and people in the neighborhoods to do an overhaul of the entrance of Foster Park. What we're hoping will happen is that over time, you'll see these wires, overhead wires, buried. It won't be like it'll be a big, sexy um, uh, architectural thing, but it'll be a subtle and more elegant entrance, and will tie the park to the rest of the city. So we're really looking forward to that, and it's been a process of about a year and a half now it, that we've been discussing. Plans are underway, and we hope to be able to have more um, information for you very soon. Thanks, Julie. Now, Perry, you want to come up and just talk about what's going to be going on next weekend? 
and for a couple of days. And again, we, all, we want to thank all the community around and also as a whole that's helped put this together. Not just the Friends of the Park and not just the Park Department, but the various associations, a lot of you in this audience. But to make it a special day for a special park treasure, Foster Park. Thank you, Al. Yes, a grand celebration is planned for July 6th and 7th here at Foster Park to celebrate our 100th year of the park. Uh, it starts on Friday, the July 6th, with a, a family fun night, which includes a uh, fitness walk around uh, the Foster Park golf course, as well as a community picnic, a hot dog picnic, is, and a uh, number of uh, athletic activities on the tennis courts, on the volleyball courts, uh, pickleball, uh, those sorts of things will be happening. Uh, carnival, our playground carnival will be out here playing games and giving away prizes for kids. And uh, that should uh, begin about 5 o'clock with the fitness walk and continue through about 9.30 on Friday night. We follow that on uh, Saturday with uh, more activities. We have a golf outing which uh, benefits will, will uh, uh, benefit the uh, uh, Foster Park Improvement, Foster Golf Course Improvement Projects. And then Saturday we end the, the weekend with a historic tour of a lot of our uh, uh, historic parks, uh, including Foster and McMillan, uh, Lakeside, and then some of the other parks, and, and an ice cream social right here in Foster Park. Uh, you can visit fortwayneparks.org to get all the details on uh, that uh, two-day celebration, uh, as well as uh, registration information for the walk and the golf outing and the uh, historic tours. Uh, also on Friday night, I forgot, we're going to have garden tours right here in our own Foster Park Gardens, led by uh, Linda Heverin. Uh, as uh, we uh, celebrate the 100 year anniversary. Questions? Thank you. Thanks, Barry. And just a couple final things. I would be remiss if I didn't thank Sarah Nichter, who lives in this community, for really helping organize a lot of this. Perry and I stand up here and say all the nice things, but it's people like Sarah that actually has done a lot of the work to get this done. And one final thing I'm not doing my job, I don't ask for money. And uh, one thing that uh, we established back in 2008 was a legacy trust, and it's a maintenance endowment fund of which we'll match dollar for dollar any contribution and for that specific park in that legacy part, in that legacy fund. So if somebody donates a dollar, we put a dollar in, it goes into an endowment and it will be dedicated directly for any type of maintenance at Foster Park. So I'm taking checks today. I brought, uh, and I've, I'm taking deposits and a lot of bank slips. But anyway, appreciate your help and support. And uh, with that, uh, we're open to any questions. And uh, if not, get out here next weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs>